Hi everybody, this is Belinda from Belinda's Book Nook. And this is part five of my Belinda's Birthday Book Haul extravaganza. I'm extremely tired and I'm going to make a big confession right now. I recorded, I thought I recorded this video just a few minutes ago. And I went through everything. I talked about the books in the bag and I went to push stop and hello, nothing was there. So, not only am I hot and I've already done my other books, as you know, because I'm still wearing the same clothes, I, I have to do it again. And it's never good the second time. I don't think so. I think if you've done it all the way through, it's hard. So I'm going to be as pleasant as I can be and we are going to work through this. So, this is my final bag. Oh my God, and it's ripping. Okay, it's <laughs> See, well, I guess there's always bloopers. There's always bloopers in the, in the uh, recording. This one is my Target bag that I'm holding the last for the books. And I guess this won't be the bag anymore because it's perfect. So, I'm gonna start off the first book. These, if I were gonna categorize most of these books or many of them, I guess I could call it YA. Um, I'm not sure, not necessarily all of them are, but I think that most of them are. Okay, let's do this again. Let's see. Take two. All right. Our first book up is by an author that I've read um, another book by, and I wanted to say it too, but I at least read one from her, and it was called Everything Everything was the original book, and she has a new book out now called Instructions for Dancing, Nicola Yoon. Cover. It's really cute, um, and um, it's as you can see on there. It is a signed copy. It is a sticker here. I will be taking it off, but I haven't got a chance to do it. And her signature is right here. Super cool. Um, Barnes and Noble always has like a stack of them that you can get. Like I got um, my um, Cicely Tyson book. No wasn't Sissy Tyson. I don't think I got her signed. I got mine first. I got another book from them signed. Who was it? Wasn't Sissy Tyson. Now I can't remember. I must not even go there because that could be a whole tangent. Okay, sticking with this story. All right, we're going to read, read the back of the book again. And you'd think I would know it. I just did this right, but no. It just went in one and out the other. So Evie Thomas doesn't believe in love anymore, especially after the strangest thing occurs. One otherwise ordinary afternoon. She witnesses a couple kiss and is overcome with a vision of how their romance began and how it will end. After all, even the greatest love stories end with a broken heart eventually. As Evie tries to understand why this is happening, she finds herself at a, at, at a La Bray dance studio, learning to waltz, foxtrot, and tango with a boy named X. X is all that Eve is not. Adventurous, passionate, daring. His philosophy is to say yes to everything, including entering a ballroom dance competition with a girl he's only just met. And I bet you can guess what's going to ensue. So she's going to get, find some attraction to him, and she's going to toy with her philosophy as he, him, he, his. Um, it's not that it's an original thing. I just enjoy, you know, like this is a good palate cleanser. Um, that I can read between some of the heavier history books that I have. So I think it'll be fun. And she writes really nice books. So very excited about that one. The next one, I saw this one for a while and I wanted it and I was like, I'm gonna get it when my birthday comes. And this one is called When Stars Rain, a no um, I'm sorry, When Stars Rain Down. It's a novel by Angela Jackson Brown. It's got an absolutely gorgeous cover. I love sil silhouettes on cover. And covers. I'm still not talking correctly. I thought that would be rectified in the second time around. God. Let me just take a minute, everybody. Oh my God. And I just realized that I still have the air conditioner on. I'm turning it off, but can I just like, just give me a pass that you had to hear that sound. <laughs> I'm so tired. I can't start again. You're going to have to forgive me because we're friends. We come and we meet and we talk books, and I'm turning it off. I've been turning it on in between videos so that I can catch my breath. See, look, look how quiet it is now. Oh my God. Well, at least I remembered before we got too far along, so that's good. 
because yeah okay let's get on with this book so this book is like a historical fiction i love historical fiction it says the summer of 1936 in parsons georgia is unseasonably hot and opal pruitt senses a nameless storm brewing she hopes this foreboding feeling won't overshadow her upcoming 18th birthday or the annual founders day celebration in just a few weeks she and her mother her grandmother birdie work as housekeepers for the white widow miss peggy and Opal desperately wants some time to be young and carefree with her cousins and friends. But when the KKK descends on Opal's neighborhood, the tight-knit community is shaken in every way possible. Parsons residents, both black and white, are forced to acknowledge the unspoken code of conduct in their post-Reconstruction era town. To complicate matters, Opal finds herself torn between two unexpected romance interests, the son of her pastor, Cedric Perkins, and the grandson of the woman she works for, Jimmy Earl Ketchums. Every time I say that name, it makes me laugh. Ketchums. Okay. Um, both young men awaken emotions Opal has never felt before. In When um, Stars Rain Down, Angela Jackson Brown introduces readers to a small southern town grappling with haunting questions still relevant today and to a young woman whose search for meaning resonates across the ages. It sounds really good. It makes me think of that um, nonfiction book that I got from Clint Smith um, talking about, like, you know, uh like historical sites and how the history translates to now etc i'm excited for this one i'm really excited for that one um the next one i saw for a while i had it on hold for or um trying to get it from my library on um libby and it never came and i was like not all the libraries picked it up i wanted to see if i could get the audiobook version and so i finally saw it come in paper book and i'm like paperback i'm like i'm a paper book paperback I decided that I was going to get it and so I did and this one's called 50 words for rain by Asha Lemmy and it's got one of those awful awful good morning America seals that's built into the cover which I'm not going to do it again because I think I've already complained in another video or maybe the video that never reported the video that never was <laughs> anyway I hate that I hate it okay we're going to read this one Kyoto Japan 1948 do not question do not fight do not resist such as eight eight year old noriko kamiza's first lesson she'll not question why her mother abandoned her with her only with only these final words she will not fight her confinement to the attic of her grandparents imperial estate and she will not resist the scalding chemical baths she receives daily to lighten her skin the child of a married japanese aristocrat and her African-American GI lover. Nori is an outsider from birth. Her grandparents take her in, only to conceal her, fearful of a stain on the royal pedigree, but they desperate to uphold in a changing Japan. Obedient to fault, Nori accepts her solitary, solitary life, despite her natural intellect and curiosity. But when chances bring her older half-brother Akira to the state that is his inheritance and destiny, Nori finds in him an unlikely ally with whom she forms a powerful bond, a bond their formidable grandparents cannot allow, and that will irre irrevocably change the lives they were always meant to lead. Because now that Nori has glimpsed a world in which perhaps there is a place for her after all, she's ready to fight to be a part of it, a battle that just might cost her everything. What do you think? I think it sounds good. I think it sounds interesting. It's going to talk about, you know, the issues of race in it, um, acceptance, um, everything. I think it's gonna be fun and interesting and uh, oh here's a picture of the author in the back um i think it'll be very interesting you know um you know the united states isn't the only place that has deals and grapples with race issues so i always like to see how it translates um on other continents okay and in other countries the next one is called the office of historical correction by daniel evans i just thought this looked really fantastic when i heard the description i pre-ordered it and i was like i'm gonna get it it's a collection of short stories and i'll read inside what it says sharp funny brilliant and prescient the stories and novella that make up the office of historical corrections offer an x-ray insight into complex human relationships allowing them to speak to larger issues of race, culture, authority, and history. We meet black and multiracial characters who are experiencing the universal confusion of lust and love, 
getting walloped by grief, all while exploring how history haunts us personally and collectively. Ultimately, these stories provoke us to think about the truths of American history, about who gets to tell them and the cost of setting the record straight. Again, this reminds me of uh, the Clint Smith book and also, what was the other history one? The um, Stamped from the Beginning. Um, so this should be great. It's short stories and a novella. Keep your eye out on that one. Should be a good discussion. The last one I got, the last one, is called Ace of Spades. It is a young adult novel by Farida Apike Ayirmaide. Ayirmaide? Ayirmaide? And love the cover, love the inside too. Look, it's pretty, pretty, pretty. And even on the cover, there's a spade that's engraved on the cover. You probably can't see it. It's very nice. Very, very nice. Okay, now get that out of the way. I saw it in Barnes & Noble. They were, it was half off, so instead of $19, it was half that price. And I knew that they were gonna do a online discussion with this author. And so I snatched up the book. Um, this book is about two Nevis private, two, when two Nevis, Nevis private academy students, Devin Richards and Shemaika Adebayo, are selected to be part of the elite school's senior prefects. It looks like their year is off to an amazing start. After all, not only does it look great on college application, but it's officially put them in running for valedictorians, too. Shortly after the announcement is made, though, there's someone who goes by aces, begins sending anonymous text messages to reveal secrets about the two of them that turn their lives upside down and threaten every aspect of their carefully planned future. And so ensues the rest of the story. Um, it sounds interesting and fun and light. I need these. I need these because I, I have a lot of heavy books that I want to get through throughout the rest of the year. And I think that these are great to fill in the space. I'm, you know what? I'm thinking in the back of my mind while I'm talking right now that I pray that when I go over there that it was recording, that I don't have to record this for a third time. I'm so tired. I'm so, so tired. I'm so tired. I love talking about books and I love connecting with you guys. I'm just saying. It's 97, 98 degrees. I had to turn the air up. My mouth is dry and I am tired. Here we go. Here's the books. These are the final ones. I have a couple that were on pre-order that are coming in July, so technically they aren't the end, but I will talk about them and randomly as they arrive as opposed to a book haul video and don't drop it. So those are the books. Let me know if you're interested in any of these or if you think they're good, if I picked some good books. And if you've read any of these, um, I hope that you enjoyed the video and I hope that it recorded when I stop. I'm so tired. I'm so tired I'm going to take a sip before I stop. I know, this is lazy. Just say lazy, Belinda. You're being lazy. Mm. Okay, let's pray. Let's go over there and hope that it recorded, please. Okay. Bye, guys.